Welcome to the heart of London and to RecWatch TV. Today we're not down by the sea, but on the banks of the River Thames. This is the largest archaeological site in the world. Not standing ruins, but what lies just below the mud. The Thames was used since Neolithic times as a sacred shrine, and people have settled here ever since Rome invaded 2,000 years ago. The river was a highway for travel and trade. More than that, it was Britain's largest garbage dump. Anything and everything got thrown into these waters, from sacrificed prehistoric people to coins, pots and pans, and whatever you can imagine. As the tide ebbs and flows here twice a day, amazing treasures are being found, eroded by the river. Not big stuff, but small finds that speak volumes about everyday life. What tales the Thames has to share? As Rudyard Kipling wrote in The River's Tale, 20 bridges from tower to queue wanted to know what the river knew. 20 bridges or 22, for well, they were young and the Thames was old. And this is the tale that River told. So how come such a wealth of ancient treasures are popping out of the Thames mud? Imagine, for 11 miles, throughout history London's riverbanks were packed with docks, wharfs, warehouses, shipyards, fish markets, breweries, slaughterhouses, pubs and houses. And into the water went masses and masses of everyday waste, chance losses and stolen goods. London's South Bank was for centuries a sin city. This area, known as Bankside since 1554, or Southwark today, was where the poor lived and London tried to sweep away and forget the underbelly of society. Here gangs of body snatchers dug up the dead to sell bones for medical classes, and on these banks were the biggest brothels and most violent crime ridden pubs. Much of this land was owned by the Bishop of Winchester, who built his London palace on it. The bishops enjoyed great freedom to tax pubs and prostitutes, known locally as Winchester geese, after their holy landlords. Undesirables who took too much liberty were thrown into the city's infamous hellhole of a prison, the Clink, which gave its name to jails everywhere. In Tudor times, Bankside was where London went to have fun. There were bear baiting arenas in the 16th century, and this is where Shakespeare hang out and trod the boards. The first playhouses, the Rose, Swan and Globe, opened their doors here in the 1580s and 1590s. Bankside's popularity stemmed from its location, bang smack opposite London Bridge. In a space of a few minutes, you could cross from law and order into the dark side of the capital. North of the bridge lies the Pool of London, where Britain lifted anchor to rule the world, for good or bad. The not so honorable East India Company set sail from here in 1600 to hoover up the cloth, spices, and jewels of the Indies and the headquarters of the Royal African Company stood a few streets inland at the Customs House steps. Hundreds of voyages left here for West Africa to swap cheap baubles for elephant tusks, gold and humans, stolen, shackled and shipped to the Americas to suffer in plantations making sugar, coffee and tobacco for the fat of the West. And dominating this riverscape of colonial power was, and still is, the Tower of London fall foul of the wrong side of royalty and the powers that be would shout take him to the tower. Many famous names were locked up from Guy Fawkes who tried to burn down the Houses of Parliament in 1605 to Rudolf Hess in 1941, the deputy leader of the Nazi party. It's all this sweeping past that makes the riverbank so loaded with history and why the craze of mudlarking is thriving like never before. Modern mudlarks aren't in it for the money. They are deeply knowledgeable, passionate to discover and save and share the history of this mighty capital. If you look carefully when heading along the Thames to meetings or the next tourist spot, you'll notice a hardy tribe of people, the mudlarks, their noses peering into the mud for liquid treasure. Right now, the mudlarks are turning up the most exciting finds from ancient London. Today though, there are no mudlarks fishing the banks. It's celebration time. They're all on the north bank of the river, displaying their finds from the last few years in the Thames Festival in the Waterman's Hall. So let's go check out what wonders have been turning up. So we're here at Waterman's Hall in the centre of the capital of London with top model art Jason Sandy. Hello. Hey Jason, how are you doing? Yeah, very good. Looks like you've had uh, some successful hunting recently. Uh, yes, well this is actually a collection assembled over 10 years now. But uh, as you can see, there's um, some nice gems in here. So what's your favourite find that we got here? 
Uh, that's always a very difficult question to answer, but one of my recent finds that I absolutely love is this World War II helmet. And if you look closely in the photograph here, you can actually see uh, a gentleman, one of the members of the fire guard, wearing this helmet, not this exact helmet, but just to have something, an artifact that's complete from that time period is just mind-blowing. So that must have been really cool, I mean, when you found that. Was it, yeah. was it just a bit of it sticking out of the mud or the whole thing? Uh, actually, it was turned upside down, and I thought it was a salad bowl or maybe a pot or a pan that just somebody jumped into the tent. Uh, what's your name? My name is Christina. Christina, how long have you been mudlarking for? Exactly one year. Wow, and what got you excited about playing around in the mud? Um, literally just was walking along the fence and I saw someone doing it and I asked what they are searching for and that's how I just found out about it. So. And how many times uh, often do you get out into the mud? Sorry, uh, twice a week. Twice. That's pretty good, yeah? Yeah. And what's your favorite find you got here? I love coins, uh, so maybe old Jetons, tokens, I love to find. This ring is uh, from Soviet Russia, 1976. Wow. Yeah, it's a woman's ring with um, probably amethyst inside. Hi, I'm Monica Butling Smith. I'm a mudlark from the Thames. Um, you can find me on Instagram at muddyco.thames. Um, and I've curated a exhibition here specifically for this amazing building, Waterman's Hall, because London is London because of our River Thames and because of the amazing things that have been brought in and out of this place on the river. So I have included ship timbers, padlocks, um, nails from ships, tools used to create um, buildings, to tools used to fix and repair ships, everything to do with the river. So um, when you think of the River Thames, what does it mean to you? For me, it's a place of solace where I go to be on my own and a place of curiosity because I find the most amazing things and then I get to research them um, and find out the stories behind the items that I found. So it could be a medieval pax which would have been kissed by thousands of medieval um, citizens out on their way to church. Or it could be a Saxon coin that was lost in the 800, the year 800. Or, and you know, how, so how long have you been mudlarking for? I've been mudlarking about eight years now. So who's this guy? This is Buffalo Bill. He came to London in the 1880s to do a show, basically bringing his own cowboys and Indians and horses galloping around an arena. And for all the people who came to see his show, when they left, there was merchandise. And his Buffalo Bill pipes were part of the merchandise. So you didn't so, get the t-shirt, you got the pipe. You got the pipe, exactly. So well, I loved it, because the minute I saw him, I was like, you know, that face looks familiar. Sure enough, Buffalo Bill. So, it's, it's quite a sweetheart, that one. That is awesome. Uh, While Londoners check out these glorious muddy finds, Louis of At Louis Forward Music fills the room with the soulful sounds of sea shanties, remembering times gone by when rivers and the sea defined the British Isles. To tens of thousands of people walking past the banks of the Thames every day, this river here is just something that's in the background. It's good for a photo shot, right? But to the passionate people we just met in the Waterman's Hall, this mud here is something exceptional. The banks here are a place for exploration, for discovery, and as they scrape away the mud, they peer back into time at the ships and the prison vessels that were moored here and went out into the great world in search of discovery, exploration, people and power. And all those finds, the Roman pottery, the Georgian tobacco pipes, the medieval pots and pans, was found right here, and they call it liquid gold. The Thames for centuries was the greatest garbage dump in the world, but today it's the biggest archaeological site on the globe. And that's why, deep down, the mudlarks care. Thanks for watching On The Beach. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notifications bell to stay up to date on all that's happening on RecWatch TV. Until next time, deep down we care.